Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. What a day it is. We thank the Lord for his mercy. We thank the Lord for his goodness. We thank the Lord that his mercies are new every morning. And before we start, let us just share a prayer to appreciate the gift of life, to appreciate the gift of health. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord my God, we come before your precious, most worthy throne. Father, we honor you this morning. We glorify you. We give you praise. We give you glory. For indeed, you are a faithful God. Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Father, we know that it is by your mercy, it is by your grace, almighty God, that we are able to be here this morning. Father, we honor you and we glorify you. Father, Lord, I say as I speak this morning, Father, may it be you who speaks through me. Father, it may be my face that they see, it may be my voice that they hear, but Lord, let your spirit be the one that does the speaking, almighty God. Father, I pray for each and every individual, almighty God, that has come and to join and to hear your word this morning, that Father, Lord my God, bless them as they listen, almighty God. Bless them as they listen, Father. I pray that their hearts become fertile soil huh? for this word that we are about to plant as a seed into their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we honor you and we glorify you for you are a mighty, mighty God. Father, take all the glory for it is all about you, God. It is not about me. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I thank you, living God. Spirit of the living God, take over. This is your platform. This is your time, Father God. This is all for you to speak. Oh, Father, we honor you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, family. I hope you are good and you are well this morning. I have a power pack message just for you. It has been burning in my heart for the past two weeks. And God said, you know what? You can't keep ignoring this. It's time for you to speak. Today, I want us to go to a scripture that is commonly read, but God wants to bring new meaning to it in Jesus' name. Let us run to Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Psalm 23. To God be all the glory. I'm using a MacArthur Study Bible, but please feel free to use whatever Bible, whatever version that you are comfortable with. Hallelujah. Psalm 23. We're going to read from verse 5. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. May you bless the reading of your word, almighty God. Hallelujah. Now, where we have read, we are reading something that we have read. It's, it's not something that is new. But as I was meditating, God brought new meaning and new dimension to this. Now, in the world, we have a saying that says, what do you bring to the table? Ha! Where we discuss a table. But listen to this. There is something that God was saying about the table that he wanted you and me to understand. What is the table that God is talking about here? He says, I prepare a table. I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. But before we can get to that, let us understand what is the table that God is talking about. Now listen to this. <laughs> Everybody, you and I included, when God was creating us, there is a destiny that God has created us to fulfill. There is something that God has called us specifically for. There is something that when he was creating us, ha, he created us specifically for that purpose. Now listen to this. When he says, I'm preparing a table, it is that table that God is talking about. He is talking about the time, the moment wherein you begin to live live and to exist within your destiny. The time, the moment that you begin to operate within the office that God had created you to operate in. Now listen to this. When God says he prepares a table for us, 
he is saying that he sets in order the things that get us to where we need to fulfill our purpose. Now listen to this. Many people spoke about the life of Jesus and how Judas being his betrayer sat with him and dined with him at the final or the last supper. Many people thought that that was the supper or the table that God was talking about. But that is not the table that God was talking about. I'll give you another example. The word of God says that the woman went to Jesus and said, Lord, can you also help me? And Jesus said to her, I was not called. I did not come for you. And then she said, but the dogs eat the crumbs ha, that fall from the master's table. Meaning that she understood that from this table, when the cup runs over, as the master is feasting, as he is living out his destiny, as he is fulfilling his purpose, there are crumbs that will fall. The word of God says in Psalms 23 that you fill my cup, it runs over. This woman understood that you may not have come for me. You may not have come for the likes of me and my family. But I know that at some point, as the master is feasting at his table, as you are living out your your destiny there will be an overflow huh, of blessing there will be an overflow of anointing there will be crumbs that will fall and she said we are the dogs that will eat the crumbs that fall from the table so yes it may not be for me but i have an opportunity to partake that is the table that God is talking about here. He says, I created in the presence of your enemies. He says, I prepare. Jesus Christ, when he left, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Meaning that there was something that needed to be prepared. Raboshiaka. Meaning that whatever God has set for you, there was preparations that were taken into consideration. Now, if you and I can look at an example of when we prepare for the Christmas feast, what we usually do is we wake up early in the morning we will chop and we will cut all the vegetables we will get everything in order why we are preparing for a feast when we have cooked what do we do we then set the table for the people who must come and eat now god ay, 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 when god was putting you through the trials of life when you were going through the different things that were happening in your life you were asking yourself but god what is happening here he says i was cutting i was chopping I was preparing the table for you. I was preparing you for a moment such as this because there is a day where when you sit in your destiny, where you will sit at the table that God has prepared for you. Now listen, 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 listen. Every night that you had to cry yourself to sleep, every night where you didn't understand what was happening in your life, you went through so many challenges, went through so many tunnels. They kept telling you to hold on. There will be light at the end you went through so many situations and the question that you didn't understand was god what is happening why me why am i the one who always has to be crying why is it ay, 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 ay. why is it after one problem there is another problem and god was saying i am preparing a table for you now listen to this Judas never feasted, he never partook in God's destiny because Jesus Christ's destiny, he came to die for me and you so that we can have life in abundance. Judas Iscariot was not going to partake in that destiny. He was not going to sit at that table. That is why the word of God tells us that as they were crucifying Jesus Christ, Judas out of his own guilt went and hung himself. Why? Because a table was being prepared in the presence of the enemies. Enemies are always going to be there. Let me tell you something. As you are rising to take your rightful place, they are there, but they do not get to partake in what God has for her. They are there just to witness, to see that, oh my God, this person is not an ordinary person. There is a favor. There is a grace like no other. He prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. He, the enemies don't sit at the table. It, they are just there to see the mercy and the grace of God upon your life. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He sets my house in order in the presence of my enemies. He sets everything and he makes it beautiful in his time in the presence of my enemies for his glory. If we can go back, there's so many 
many examples that I can give you. When you look at the Bible, you will see that many a time there were many instances where God saved the Israelites, but he waited for the right time so that the eyes that needed to see, ah, the eyes that needed to witness, listen, the word of God says that at the end of it all, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. From what? Why would they? Because they would have seen the glory of the Lord. Upon you, the word of God says in Isaiah 60, Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. Who is it that must see this glory? It is your enemies. He says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, there will be enemies. There will be people who don't wish you well. There will be people who will betray you. Look at Jesus Christ. He was feasting and dining with his Judas. It's not people that are far from you that will betray you. It's people that are right in your circle. People that are under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People that sit with you and dine with you. They eat with you. You wash their feet and yet they will betray you. But it's okay because why? They need to be there for the fulfillment of the will of God. They need to be there to see the hand of God on your life. So whatever they were saying can be rendered null and void. Whatever they were doubting can be confirmed. Why? For the glory of God. So that God can be glorified. So that God can receive all the glory. So that God can receive all the honor. That's what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about anyone or anything else. It is all for the glory of God. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. If you read a few verses up, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, meaning where is that death coming from? Meaning that his life is threatened. He can't trust anyone or anything because the people that are, yeah, 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 they are not real. But the word of God says that he creates, he creates a table for me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though those I love betray me, even though those I trusted, they betray me, even though he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God's opinion is not based on anyone else's opinion of you. Whatever God has said over your life shall come to pass. When God called you, he was not calling you because you are perfect. He didn't ask for a committee meeting to vote whether you were deserving or yeah, yeah, yeah. He called you. He set you apart. He qualified you. He's going to bless you. He's going to pick you up. He's going to anoint you because he prepares the table in the presence of your enemies. Don't think that your enemies will first have to disappear. Ha! Don't think that your betrayers will first have to disappear. The will of God, the will of God will be seen upon your life. The glory of God will be seen upon your life. Even in their presence. That's why the word of God says love your enemies. Love your enemies. Because as you love them. <laughs> as you love them. You're loving them because you understand. You see the bigger picture. That it doesn't matter what they do or say. It doesn't matter what they wish or think of me. All I know is that the will of God at the end of the day will remain standing. He prepares a table for me. My destiny, his will for my life is not dependent on the opinion of others. God does not see as man sees. God does not make decisions based on anyone. Ah, listen, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher. His thoughts are higher. He says, you prepare a table for me. In the presence <laughs> of my enemies, you anoint my head. My cup runs over. Why? For the glory of the Lord. Remember, for a light to be seen, 
for his brightness to be seen. It must be lit in a dark place. So all the darkness, all the fake people, all the enemies that are surrounding you, they're just making it so that your light can shine even brighter. Ha! So that your light can be seen even more visibly. He prepares a table for me. <laughs> in the presence of my enemies. He anoints your head. They can see that God is anointing you and there's nothing they can do about it because God, if he can be for you, who is it that can be against you? If God stand for you, who is it that can stand against you? Your enemies, are a blessing. Count it all joy when you go through all these various trials and tribulations. Count it all joy when you go through everything. There is a reason for it all and that reason is so that the name of God can be glorified. That reason is so that all the honor, all the glory can go to the king of kings. They were expecting you to fail. They didn't think that you would make it this far. They had already said she can't stay married for so long. They had already said this marriage can't last. She may have one child, but I promise that's all. There's so many things that would have been spoken into your life. But God says it's okay. I allow it to happen. Why? Because I want my glory to be seen. My strength is emphasized in your weakness. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. God will uplift you. His will for your life is not threatened. Ha! The word of God says he's not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Whatever God has said over your life will not be changed because of what someone else says about you. It won't be changed because of what someone else thinks about you. God's thoughts about you are complete. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head. My enemies are there, but he continues to anoint my head. So much so that my cup, the anointing, the blessing, the favor, the mercy, <coughs> oh my God, my cup runs over. So much so that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will continue to dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Don't worry about what God is doing. I know sometimes it feels like the meal is taking long to be completed. The chef is still busy. God is still busy working on you. He, the potter, is still shaping the clay. Don't worry about it. As soon as it's perfect and ready, God will bring it. He will set the table and every eye will be able to see. Every ear will hear what God has done in your life. Everyone will be a witness to what God has done in your life. All those that were expecting you to fail will be the ones to applaud you. Oh my God, my God. Let's go to Isaiah 60 as we wrap up. To God be the glory. Don't be discouraged. Whatever you're going through, don't be discouraged. There is a reason for why you are going through what you're going through. There is a reason for the timing. God prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. Don't lose hope. Don't lose strength. Don't lose courage. There is a reason for it all. He prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. Let's go to Isaiah 60. I want to show you something. Isaiah 60. <clears throat> Let us read, my God, my God, my God, from verse 14. 
He says, also the sons of those who afflicted you, they shall come bowing to you. All those who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel, whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, my God, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and milk the breast of kings. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Listen to this. Listen to what God says. He says, irregardless of how they feel about you, irregardless of how they deliberately ignore and go around you, I will make you an eternal excellence. Thus says the Lord. People's opinions over you, whatever they're saying over you, it cannot change your destiny. <clears throat> it cannot change what God has spoken over you. It cannot change the will of God over your life. He says, yeah, that the sons of those who despised you, those who afflicted you, they must come bowing to you. Why? Because the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. They will see that, ah, uh ah, -uh, we were wrong about this person. That is what happened with Judas Iscariot as he was betraying Jesus Christ. He never realized the burden that he was placing upon himself. The word of God says he immediately began to regret what he had done. He took the money. He took it back and he said, listen, I, I was wrong. I should have never sold him. I should have never betrayed him. I should have never. I, I should have never. But it was too late. The word of God says he then went because of his guilt and hung himself. Now listen to this. At the end of the day, every knee, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is God. It doesn't matter what they say. <laughs> it doesn't matter how they group themselves. It doesn't matter how they look down upon what God is doing in your life. At some appointed time, the eyes of their eyes will be opened and they will see who you really are. They will realize the anointing, the, uh, the favor upon your life. The word of God says God will make you an eternal excellence. <laughs> Whereas you have been forsaken and hated so that no one went through you. I will make you an eternal excellence. <clears throat> if God can be the one to make you an eternal excellence, who can say otherwise? If God can be the one to uplift you, who is it that can put you down? If God opens a door, who is it that can shut it? If God speaks, who can speak against him? If God says yes, who is it that can say no? For he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. My job, your job, our duty, our responsibility is easy. Our job is just to worship him, to glorify him. Don't worry, don't mind the jail that they have placed you in. Although it's not a physical one, they have caged you with their words. Don't you worry about that. Just like Paul and Silas continue to praise this God. And I promise you that the shackles will fall. My God. As you and I praise and worship this God, he makes a way. As we praise and we worship this God, he opens doors. He breaks down walls. Don't you worry about it. Don't even pay attention to it. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the work of God. Fix all your eyes on whatever he has spoken into your life. He says... <laughs> That if you can focus, fix your eyes on his kingdom, on his work, the rest shall be added unto you saying that the rest, he will take care of it. Whatever else that you needed, ah, don't worry about it. He's got it under his control. 
Today, I'm just here to deliver one message. If you don't hear anything else that I've said, take this with you. That he prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. God prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. God prepares a table in the presence of our enemies. He will anoint your head. Your cup will run over. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Be blessed. Thank you so much for joining me. As you face this new coming week, go into it with the confidence of knowing that the King of Kings, he's got your back. Knowing that the King of Kings, he's with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The word of God says that never, as long as I have lived, have I seen those who trust in the Lord ashamed. I have never ever seen them lacking. I have never ever seen them disappointed. God will never disappoint you. He's a faithful God. He loves you and he's always going to be on time for you. It may not seem that way. It may not feel that way. Trust him. Continue to praise and worship him. He is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Your cup is going to run over. Be prepared. Blessings upon blessings. Mercy upon mercy. Favor upon favor is upon your life from this moment going forward. I am Abigail Mnyai. Same time next week, I will be here with a greater anointing from the King of Kings. I love you guys so much. Be blessed and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Be blessed.